Most ships work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, placing demands on the skills and effort of you, its crew. But unlike the ship you serve, you are human and need rest and sleep. Without this, you become fatigued and stressed. Qualities that endanger yourself, your colleagues and the ship itself. In this program and the accompanying workbook, we look at why you need to achieve a good work-rest balance and what measures must be adopted if fatigue, stress and further mental distress is to be avoided before finally looking at practical ways to create a relaxed and healthy environment on board. Everyone accepts that keeping a ship operating 24 hours a day is hard work. But all ships must have in place a good regime of hours of work and rest based on current regulations, stipulating minimum rest hours and periods of work. So why is balancing work and rest so important? As a species, human beings need to sleep for the body to repair, rest and regenerate. This pattern of behavior, our biological clock, is referred to as the circadian rhythm, which determines when the body feels active and inactive. The body's natural alertness falls off at night, with the lowest point being typically just before dawn, around 0300 to 0500 with a further dip occurring during the day between 1500 and 1700. So it's easy to see that irregular hours can easily disrupt this rhythm and sleep loss builds up, producing what is referred to as sleep debt. In time, unless the debt is repaid, fatigue will increase and eventually overwhelm you. Putting in place an effective fatigue management plan is vital to maintaining a healthy work-rest balance, with all work-rest hours recorded for port state inspection. But this is not just about rostering sensible work schedules. Consideration should be given to the effects of jet lag on crew arriving after long-haul flights. Keeping accurate records of hours of work and rest is not only a legal requirement and subject to rigorous inspection, but is also a valuable tool in identifying where fatigue may become a problem. Hard work, even long hours, provided that the hours of work are compensated by the appropriate rest hours, don't always bring about fatigue. The underlying cause is usually disturbed and inadequate sleep patterns. This can be avoided by ensuring that cabin windows are screened from daylight for those sleeping after night watches. Making sure that sleep is not disturbed by unnecessary noise, vacuuming and power tools, noisy music or loud voices in the accommodation area when crew are sleeping. <laughs> and that there are no unnecessary phone calls or communications during rest periods. But however well rested you are, there are occupational causes for fatigue. Noise and vibration can adversely affect performance, especially new crew members who need some time to acclimatize. Poor relations between crew members. Problems at home. Difficult weather conditions. The accumulated effect of working long hours. Pressure of keeping up with regulations and paperwork and responding to communications around the clock. But it is the cumulative effect of fatigue that is most dangerous. It builds up and may not be that obvious for some time. So what are the signs to look for? When someone is suffering from fatigue, they are less likely to converse and communicate, become more irritable, are less likely to perform low-demand tasks, will have a slow reaction time, 
display an impaired judgment of distance, speed and time. Have a decreased level of attention and vigilance. Show an inability to prioritize and become preoccupied with trivial tasks. Process information more slowly, have confused thinking. Find it harder to grasp more complex tasks. Falling asleep while doing safety critical tasks such as navigating. These are symptoms that can build slowly, so slowly in fact that the patterns of behavior become normal. Everyone on board should be alert to these signs in yourself and your workmates before it becomes a dangerous issue. And all these factors are important. Anyone suffering from the effects of serious fatigue may find that they are less able to cope with the demands of living and working. This soon gives rise to increasing levels of anxiety and, worse still, stress. Research shows that stress contributes to indigestion, skin problems, headaches, heart disease, high blood pressure and poor sleep patterns. Our mental powers can also be seriously affected by stress, which damages our ability to concentrate and make good decisions. We feel panicky, anxious and depressed, all factors that drain energy and affect performance. People respond to stress in different ways, but there are two classic reactions. Fight, aggressive responses such as snapping at colleagues. Flight, removing yourself from a situation, denying that it exists, even panicking. Obviously, both types of response affect performance negatively and can be dangerous in an emergency. Stress awareness training is becoming more commonly used and helps in understanding how people are affected by this, what the physical, mental and emotional responses are and how best to cope with stress. There should also be an awareness of cultural aspects of stress. Expressing anxieties openly may be seen by some as a sign of weakness, that being macho will get you through. Some may see stress as a mental condition, to be hidden away and ashamed of. Watchkeepers, when they're handing over, have a responsibility to judge whether their relief is fit for duty. The master or head of department have a duty of care for both themselves and their crew. Without attaching blame to individuals, which only makes matters worse, they need to establish the root of the problem by looking at lack of communication. Do people feel able to talk openly and be listened to? Are there problems at home that can be shared and eased? Are people being asked to perform tasks they feel undertrained for and unable to carry out? Are there interpersonal problems on board between crew members? And do any crew feel isolated and vulnerable? This last point is particularly distressing, as a combination of a sense of isolation, stress, emotional, family and home problems have occasionally led to a seafarer's suicide. Sometimes these changes take time to appear, and those around the person simply get used to them or feel they shouldn't interfere. It's imperative that all officers and crew feel they have someone that they can approach to talk through any problems. While ashore, seafarers can turn to welfare services, such as port-based missions for support and counselling. For more information on this topic, please refer to the accompanying workbook. We've looked at the causes of fatigue and stress and the benefits of good undisturbed rest. But what other activities help to maintain good health and well-being? A good diet. Healthy eating is most important, taking meals at the right time of day and of the right kind. The mess should provide a balanced and nutritious diet. Protein when you need it before work something light before sleeping. Best not to drink coffee or tea before sleep. Exercise. 
This is vital. Some ship work is not very physical, and your body needs to work hard to strengthen muscles. Exercise also gives you a feeling of general well-being, good for morale and improved mental health. If the vessel is equipped with a gym, you should make regular use of it. And if there is no gym facility, there are exercise routines that you can carry out in your cabin, as outlined in Program 4, The Benefits of Exercise. If it's available, play table tennis with your shipmates. It's a good social activity that uses up energy. Activities. Socialising is an important part of keeping the team ethic strong. So make good use of the saloon area, where you can relax, watch movies, play cards. Perhaps you could help to organise team events, such as quiz nights. Vessels should try to provide internet access whenever possible. This is good for morale, as you can keep in touch with family and friends. Life on board can be isolating, and this sort of personal communication will help combat loneliness or even depression. However, internet use can be a fatigue risk if used when you should be sleeping. It's also good to make time to research subjects of interest and study accredited courses for your career development. Very important for one's own advancement and self-esteem. A ship has to work 24 hours a day, and for this it needs a crew that are fresh and alert at all times. This programme has examined many of the key issues, and here are some points to remember. Fatigue affects performance and can be a serious safety risk. International regulations specify seafarers' maximum work hours and minimum rest periods. You should be able to recognize the signs of fatigue in yourself and your crewmates. You can do many things to address fatigue. Social activities, relaxing before going to bed, taking more exercise, eating a healthy, balanced diet, and drinking plenty of fluids can all help to improve the quality of sleep and therefore your alertness. You can get on top of your stress by talking to people, exercising regularly and improving your diet. Talk to your supervisor or head of department about what you can do to minimize your fatigue and or stress. More details on all the subjects covered in this program can be found in the accompanying workbook. Legislation is very clear when it comes to hours of work and rest and with good reason. Fatigue and stress can creep up on you, so remember what you've learnt and stay relaxed, alert and well rested.